Well, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to another portrait painting tutorial. This is going to be a live live stream of a pre-recorded video. So I'm talking to you live and I'm going to be answering your questions live. I'm going to be explaining everything to you live. So you kind of get the point, right? Uh, so we are going to do this painting here. So this is what you will eventually see after an hour 20 something minutes. So um, an hour 20 something minutes and you get what you see there as a finished result uh, completely in real time. It is a self-portrait color study. So a self-portrait color study and I'm starting off by covering the gray tone of the canvas with a, a pretty much anything dark that is on my palette. So I took Doxazine purple, ultramarine blue, a little bit of alizarin. So we have a pretty much a generic dark brown. And I'm using a, just a piece of paper towel. I prefer to use Viva brand uh, cloth, like uh, the one that says like a cloth, uh, Viva brand. And no medium, just odorless mineral spirits. The palette is in the description box of the video, but if you would like me to, I can uh, tell you all about the colors, and I probably will throughout the duration of this stream. So it's gonna be a long stream, an hour and a half, which is still a lot. Uh, it's a lot, but it's really not that much time to create a painting. So I do recommend you spend a little bit longer if you're uncomfortable doing um, a, like a short-term uh, painting. Hey, John, welcome, welcome. So I'm going in with the darks for the hair. Like I said, pretty much anything dark, even though I have uh, dark hair, I can still use uh, ultramarine blue, daxazine purple, and uh, kill off the purple with Indian yellow, which is most likely what I did there. And I'm going around the perimeter of the outside shape of my face. So this is going to be a shape-oriented um, rather than linear oriented approach. So I'm not thinking too much about construction lines or anything. I'm, I'm thinking of just big shapes, big structures that are three-dimensional in nature. So having that tone that I put, the wet tone on the canvas helps because I have a, um, a lead primed, so oil lead primed linen, uh, which again, the information is in the description box. Let's see, hey Mark Tunes, what's the hey Mark Tunes? What's going on? What's going on? So this is live. Remember, feel free to ask any questions. Like I said, live stream means internet may be a thing from time to time. So sometimes I will lose my internet, so I lost it for a second there, but that's just the way it goes. But uh, feel free to ask any questions throughout the demonstration. We haven't gotten into skin tones yet, but it looks like we're about to soon. So I added a little bit of um, cadmium red and green. My green should be viridian, but it is ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow. But it, it behaves similar to viridian close enough but I do recommend you use Viridian so now we're going in with the shadow tones of the face and like I said this is a mass oriented approach for anyone that's unfamiliar with what that means it means that we are not dealing too much with construction lines even though you see some lines there well they're actually shapes they're big blocks that I'm going to uh, sculpt out like a sculptor would probably take rectangular chunks off of something and and start to sculpt it. So since it's a face, uh, we're gonna deal with a lot of the complexity with the skin tones, and you will see kind of a, a gradation of skin tone uh, eventually start to uh, emerge on the palette. So again, a little bit of red and green to create a nice dark brown for these skin colors, as you're gonna see here. And I'm using it to cover a lot of uh, the, the skin. And actually, I don't know why I did that. I put in the dark for the eyebrows. I guess I must have been going in right with the... Uh, okay, there we go. Now the dark for the eyes. So again, when I'm painting outside of um, the usual 
live stream where I'm painting and talking at the same time, I do things a little bit differently. So when I'm narrating this for you, it's kind of a a surprise to see different. Um, well, there we go. Now, so what we're going to do is that was a dirty brush from the freezer, so it it already had some paint on it. But now we're mixing into it anyway. So I'm using white, orange, and blue to create the basis for the skin tone. Now because this is a color study, things are going to be a little bit loose, a little bit faster. You see I'm going right with red into the middle of the palette. Uh, no, I'm not self-taught. I've, uh, I've had the privilege of having really, really uh, great teachers in my lifetime. So I, I'd say I'm probably... I'm probably 85% uh, taught and 15% self-taught. It might be even less. I've been very fortunate with my teachers. And we can talk more about that too if you're interested. Um, so with color study, you want to think about this very basic concept. Every plane change is a color change. And that's it. Every plane change is a color change. This is the fundamental truth behind color study. But within that fundamental truth lies everything else. So the idea is you're sculpting out planes with shapes of value. Things are lighter if they're closer to the light, meaning closer to perpendicular to the light source, and they are darker if they are closer to parallel to the light source. So now what we're doing is we're sculpting out large planes of the face just like a sculptor would and we're going to start to add some color here. So you saw I went dramatically between the red and whatever was on the palette. When you're doing this you want to use a brush for Faces, if you're going to do a color study of a face like this, you do not want to do palette knife for a face like you would a still life. But if you were to do a color study of a still life, then I would suggest to go with a palette knife. So now I'm adding a, a lot of light underneath of the nose because the lighting is, is a little similar to how you see me here. There's more light kind of facing over here less light like in the concavity of the eye socket and areas like that. Now you see a lot of red um, going in with red and that was actually thalo turquoise. Thalo turquoise and cadmium red. They neutralized each other and it's giving me a very strange red that I'm probably closer to a, a neutralized um, viridian. Hey hippie artist, what you want to think of as every plane change is a color change, and planes themselves are just sheets in three-dimensional space that have a specific value to one another, you're thinking of the form, but at the same time, you're working with color intuitively. So now you see the gradation on the palette. On the top are the lighter values and on the bottom it gets darker and I'm guessing on the left is going to be the warm the right is going to be the cool that kind of organization really helps but now with the that is the bridge of the nose pretty much the intersection between the nasal bone and the the, um, the bridge of the nose right here uh, for me I've got a nice bump on my nose uh, not a very straight nose so there's a big area of light and I actually made it cooler more blue relative to the surrounding colors now because I'm using a um, an LED light which is above me it is not that colorful so everything is very um, subdued all of the colors are very subdued but there was a there is a halogen light that is behind me and a, a, a white curtain that's behind me so eventually when we get to it, um, and again, I'll do a little side by side here so you can see where we're heading. So now you can see pretty much working with, uh, you can't really see me, but pretty much working with big shapes. Think about just planes, and you're just carving them 
into place and describing the light condition as you go. And you can see already in the first, I don't know how many minutes it's been, um, you can see that image really start to uh, take take shape there. So let's get that out of there. Again, just so you know where we're heading. And um, pretty much that's it. We're just going to keep working with the shapes in this way. And I'm going to keep talking about the color. So we have now a little bit of Daxazine purple and I believe green. Excuse me. Purple and green go together pretty well. As do, as does, uh, say, orange and pink. Uh, they go together uh, pretty well. So please feel free to ask any questions, any uh, art-related questions you may have, or if you want to know something about me, like my teachers or something like that, definitely feel free to ask. I want to emphasize how important this exercise is, and I know you've probably heard me say this a bunch of times, but if you want to improve on your painting, self-portraits and master studies are the way to go. Master studies meaning uh, spend hours and hours and hours studying your favorite artist. Uh, I, I study Rembrandt in, a, in very, very close detail. I study Rembrandt. Um, and uh, pretty much just kind of memorized what his paintings look like. And I'm not copying what he does, but I'm taking what he did and letting that be the inspiration for what I will eventually do. Hey, Sa Shavu. Thank you, thank you. So now we're adding... Oh, thanks, Shavu. Thanks for watching from, uh, from India. I'm glad to have you here on the live stream. Now what you see is a little bit of a dark red for the lips. So I went in with a dark red. It must have been Daxazine purple, alizarin, crimson, neutralized with a little bit of green. And um, every plane change is a color change, is a thing. You also want to relate adjacent planes to one another. So when I'm mixing the color for the lips, I'm looking at the nose, the dark red shape of the nose. And because I'm working from life, I was looking at a mirror when I did this. That is the optimal way to study this. Doing this from a picture will not help you as much as uh, doing this uh, from from life. So Mark Toons, uh, let's see. After you paint the canvas background, do you have to wait a while for it to dry before you start blocking in the face? Nah, no, no, you can just go right into it. Um, if you use thick paint the way I did, yeah, some people will wait. Sometimes I'll wait like 20 minutes just so it tacks up a little bit, gets a little bit um, a little bit dry, but it's not going to be dry dry for days because it is oil paint. But um, no, I just kind of went into it the way it was. Uh, and yes, yes, this is a self-portrait. Um, pretty much the only resemblance you'll, you'll see at this point is just the mask of the face and the hair. But, but yeah, it's a self-portrait. And I was looking, uh, so a hippie artist, I was looking at, um, uh, at a mirror. So um, just looking at a mirror. The mirror is still set up next to the painting. I actually painted this. I finished this painting about like 20 minutes before doing the live stream. Um, I was running a little behind this week on, on work for various different reasons. But um, yeah, I painted this. Uh, the paint is still wet on the palette, by the way. This is what the palette will eventually look like. And I actually don't clean my palette anymore. The mixing space, I don't really clean. I just let it sit and um, I just paint right onto it the next day. And um, if something is too tacky, like in between dry, I just get the palette knife, scrape it off, use mineral spirits, and you're good to go. It is good though. It is good to have this. Something like this, um, a clean surface and a neutral gray is ideal if you're going to be uh, doing more realistic stuff because if your tone, whoops, I just scratched this tone, but if your tone is a gray like this and your palette is a gray like this, it's going to be easier for you to gauge your mixtures if you are a... Um, just, a, just beginning. 
However, if you've been painting for many, many years, or you just paint a lot, if you just paint a lot, um, it, you know, just leaving the colors on your palette and throwing it in the freezer when you're done is very convenient. It's very convenient. So now you see the nose and the um, the brow ridge or the eyebrows. I just went in right with a brush stroke there, and we have something dark and round with the nose and that area. That is because it is easier to add light over top of dark when you're working with Ella Prima. And now we're throwing in uh, a little bit kind of like a greenish color. Like I said, the, the nose is closer to the orange. The uh, brow ridge is closer to the, I don't know, like an alizarin. This part's cooler. And now we've got green on the, um, on the facial hair. So um, definitely going all around. The colors like I said every plane change is a color change and you want to work your colors adjacent to one another so every shape that I look at I'm kind of looking at the peripheral view so I'm looking so for example the bulb of the nose well look at the bridge of the nose and see what that color is in relation to that for the, the facial hair look at the say the dark underneath of the you can even relate it to the canvas. Uh, what color is that related to the tone of the canvas? Which, by the way, was a neutral gray. Uh, I toned it neutral gray weeks ahead of time. I've got a bunch of these. Like I just showed you, just um, I toned them ahead of time. So I have a, a surface to paint on. Now, the important thing is that you look at the color of the light in relation to the color of the shadow. Hello, However... However, and I almost said hello. What's going on with me today? Kind of sleepy, sorry. So the color of the light in relation to the color of the shadow in this specific instance with um, with a uh, more subdued light, you're not going to see that much color in the shadow. So everything that you do put in the light is going to be even more important to get the, the light effect. This, by the way, is caffeine-free Diet Coke. I typically don't like uh, caffeine because when I'm painting, it makes my hands shake. Why are those numbers there? Okay, I must have been adjusting something on my camera when I was filming this. Also, by the way, I was talking to my uh, Zoom patrons, actually, when I was um, filming this. A little bit of multitasking. So if you see me pointing at something... It's just because I was talking to my students. Uh, so I am now adding some light for the glasses. So whenever you're painting someone that normally wears glasses, uh, like I do, the glasses actually are part of the likeness. So like if you look at me without my glasses, you probably won't recognize me. Not that you would recognize me anyway, um, but I don't look quite the same without my glasses. And when I'm looking at my computer screen, all I see is a blob of color, which is exactly what I started with. And what I encourage you to do is work with big blobs of color, big blocks of color. So glasses, again, just put in a few lights, uh, highlights for where the light is reflecting and a few little shadows for where the frame is resting and, and you've got glasses. The impression of glasses. We'll add more specifics to it later. But um, that's that's how it goes. Using larger brushes and having your brushes organized. So my brushes are back in the freezer, but I I had maybe about four or five, maybe even six different brushes. I tend to use pretty much all the same type of brush. This is a Silver Brush Grand Prix. Uh, it is my favorite type of brush. I should be better about cleaning them, but they do all right in the freezer. Um, but yes, any questions would be much appreciated uh, from the audience here. We've got about 20 of us. Uh, so, so any questions, especially color related questions. I know a lot of you have asked me about color. So I'm an open book. Go ahead. Um, ask me any questions here. Uh, hey, Angela. Welcome. Welcome. Sorry, I missed you in the live chat. Um, the live chat for the month of what month is it the month of november so hopefully i'll see you actually you know what let me double check 
December is coming up soon. Oh, I turned my phone off. Well, hopefully I'll see you the first Thursday. Um, I don't really have my schedule on me. Uh, so you see on the palette now a very, very organized string. So the light all the way down to the dark. The color changes are there, but they're very minute. They're very minute color changes. And I can tell you underneath of the the mouth, the jaw area right there, there are cooler colors down here. Both with men and women, um, typically more with men because we have facial hair. Well, not all of us do, but, but if we do, uh, you can see some cooler shapes start to emerge there. Hey, DM. Welcome, welcome. But now you see the direction where we're heading again. The mask of the face, and we're going to start to round it out and actually cool it off. In the beginning, it started off a little bit more orangey uh, because it is subtle lighting, uh, very subtle lighting. Now, my camera makes me look very orange. I look like a Martian with the way that the camera looks here, uh, which is, again, the problem with working from photo references too much is uh, you're just not really seeing color. Hey, Ellen, uh, Eileen, sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Uh, thanks for watching from Scotland. Can you put water mixable oil in the freezer? Would they freeze? No, they won't freeze. You can put them in the freezer. Water mixable oil paint is not water based. It is not based on water. It is a modified linseed oil that allows it to thin with water. But yeah, you can put it in the freezer. It, it'll be fine. Hey Carla, uh, yeah, good thing you caught on to that. I am using two different whites. I'm using lead white and titanium white. Um, so the lead, I actually mixed it up on my palette. The lead is on the right. Um, no, uh, the lead is, I actually barely even used it, but the lead is right here on the palette closer to the thumb hole. The titanium is sitting right there, uh, further out, closer to where my head is on the screen. However, I did use some lead white, um, and lead white is good because it gives you more control in the middle tone range, the darker uh, skin tone, just like by the concavity of the eye socket and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, I used mainly titanium. I go back and forth. Like in the past, I used more lead white, strictly lead white. And then um, I like the convenience of raising the values really fast, um, making them lighter much faster. And there's a pause here. I think I was, um, since I was on Zoom, I must have uh, been talking to my. Um, my zoom students at this point so throughout the demo i'll probably pause for a little bit um but don't think it's frozen it's it's not frozen at all so um uh there we go now we're painting again see how i automatically went into the lights so in my brain i was like something light okay i'm on this point of this part of the palette and uh i'm like okay i think it has to be cooler it needs to be more towards the green so i went towards the green and white itself is a cooling agent, so it makes things look lighter. And from a distance, this already looks like a face. And honestly, uh, let's see, how long have we been here? We've been here about 25 minutes. So um, I'm afraid to press the button. Let's do it. Okay, good. I took a gamble there. I'm not the most tech-savvy person in the world, but but anyway. It's been about 24 minutes now in the live stream 24 minutes and five seconds so from a distance this now starts to read as a face an unfinished face which again is the um the awkward stage because if you think of a scary movie seeing an unfinished face an apparition like that well that's gonna be uh frightening but we have big shapes and we're moving them around and at the funny thing interesting thing here with this one i never did rest my pinky and i never went to sables um kind of pushing that color study mentality because you can see the forehead 
is actually a different it's it's warmer it's closer to the orangey than the nose and uh, then the cheekbone area added a touch of red uh, most likely cadmium red and green to neutralize it for the shadow shape for the eye sockets so any questions much appreciated and yes caffeine makes my hands shake so that's why i have caffeine free uh diet coke that is my kryptonite but i do make an effort to drink more water these days Hey, Ron. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the namaste. Thanks for watching from Ivan uh, NZ. Am I forgetting what the state that is? I don't quite remember. I got like five hours of sleep last night. I was. Some days I just can't sleep for some reason. Uh, hey, Anna. Welcome, welcome. Again, any color-related questions that you have, or any painting-related questions that you have, I actually push the side plane, the temporal parietal region of the skull, a little bit closer towards the Indian yellow. So right over here, I saw a little bit more of a kind of a warm color there. Hello there. Sorry, I can't read your username. So Hippie Artist has written to us, I struggle with needing it to be correct, which causes me to start to work uh, work over. How do I keep going? I can't paint as fast as you, but uh, would like to get more work done. Um, no problem there. I can definitely answer your question. Uh, well, first, a quick question from DM. When the new assignment, when does the new assignment start on Patreon? So for the long-term one, so... Um, Wednesday we're doing the long-term ones so we're working on a um, it's across from me a water house master study we'll probably finish that I think the next time and then we'll start another one next week so next week most likely Saturday we're starting a new one every time because th those are short exercises so from hippie artist as written to us I struggle with needing it to be correct which causes me to start to work over excellent question excellent question excellent comment so there is no perfect with color. Let me tell you now, do not try to diagnose a color. And um, this can be the biggest problem color-wise when you're working with photo references because the photo reference is going to give you an exact color, an exact color code, pretty much pixel per pixel. Life working from life is not like that and yes you could look through like um one thing some some people do is they'll look through the little hole on the um on their um palette knife and try to pinpoint precision get pinpoint precision on a color you're painting a red barn in the sunset well what kind of red is it is it venetian red with a little bit of orange or whatever that is not going to be helpful for you what you want to do is look at colors in relation to one another there's no such thing as an ugly color just a color that is not related properly to the surrounding colors so my biggest advice for you is going to be set up a still life a simple still life like an egg or something something that you can draw asleep something you can draw in your sleep and do it very very expressively very quickly under different light scenarios different light circumstances and uh with the self-portrait here i want to do a couple of them maybe change the light settings this one is i don't know i think it's like 32 kelvin or something it's like more towards the warm but um i will probably do some more under different light circumstances so again don't worry about pinpoint precision with your color Get it close enough, and you'll be fine. Uh, and relate the colors to one another, because if you're trying to get it perfect, that's the, that is the problem right there. Look at the colors in relationship. Get the relationships as correct as you can, and you will be working with color that way. And paint from life. 
as much as you can. Um, and if self-portraits, if, if you're like me, you can't afford to pay a model to pose for you all the time. And it's kind of annoying to have to uh, work with art groups and not get to choose the pose and the lighting and all that. Self-portraits are going to be your friend. Self-portraits are really the best way to go there. So hopefully that answers your questions a little bit. But of course I can go into more depth with that uh, hippie artist. And, um, and yeah, about the speed. Don't worry about the speed. You should just work at your own pace. But with color study, with something like an egg um, or a block in the sunlight, uh, you can even paint a brick on a white paint a brick on a white cloth in the sunlight. That's going to give you even more, um, you know, uh, you know, experience with color. Zain Albadin. Okay, that's uh, thanks for watching from uh, Iraq. Thank you for typing out your name because I I couldn't read the letters. So Zain, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. So even though the letters are blocking the right uh, portion of the palette, you can still see the uh, the handling of the colors on the palette because I don't want you to look at the palette as a how to get a color, but look at the palette as how I organize the colors. Oh, thanks for the the hearts. Uh, Zayn, thank you. And here we are, the first 30 minutes. This, by the way, is an 8 by 10 uh, inch canvas. 8 by 10. And I would definitely suggest it if you can um, buy a bunch of linen panels at once. If, you, if you're lazy like me and you don't want to stretch. And painting on a sheet of canvas and then eventually stretching it you know maybe too much work and you don't want to spend all the money uh on a stretchers a stretched canvas these linen panels are pretty awesome um got one over here so i just i have got a bunch of them this is centurion uh centurion universal primed but like i said i um uh oil primed it with lead uh, Williamsburg lead primer. This one got a stain on it from something, but it's probably fine. So again, this is um, a gray, neutral gray toned with uh, oil paint. But you can see how small it is relative to my head. Uh, that's why well, I do have a big head, but it is pretty small. Uh, so doing a little sketch like this, 8x10, really, really good practice to do. So again, any art-related questions is welcome. We're not even in the halfway point yet. And you see how I pushed a little bit of the warmth on the on the forehead? When you do color study like this, you take chances. When you're painting a commission portrait or... Um, I'm going to tell you the worst thing you can possibly do, um, which some of you already know, but um, because I mention it a lot, but... When you're doing color study, you tend to take chances a little bit more than you would on a uh, more finished painting, for example. So I pushed the warmth on the forehead because I did see some more warmth there. And like I said, I can only see these colors. Like, for example, when I'm painting this, I'm looking here or I'm looking here. I'm not looking at this and painting this. I'm looking here to gauge the color for there. So... um. Let me tell you, the worst thing you can do, now that the holidays are approaching, do not do a painting for a family member from a graduation photo, a wedding photo, you name it, a school picture or something like that, a family picture where everyone's huddled together and smiling, holding, um, holding your... Uh, German Shepherd named Roger next to Uncle Jim and all these things. Do not do that. Avoid it at all costs. If they want a painting as a gift for the holidays and they tell you specifically what picture, get that picture, put it on your phone and put artist filter on it and then print it out and frame it and give it to them uh, and say happy holidays because it will 
will impact your painting negatively if you work from very poor quality photo references. Only do that as a last resort. If it's a commission, then it's just a last resort. Uh, so, hippie artist taking chances is not my strong area. You got to take a chance. I saw the warm orangey from the halogen behind me on this white curtain. And I, I didn't think I would put that in, but I did. I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's take a chance. Let loose, relax, breathe uh, when you're when you're painting. And sometimes you'll find that taking a chance is going to be what will get you to that next uh, next level. Because I don't think I could have painted like this in 35 minutes. Like I said, even a year ago, I don't think I could have. It's a lot of chances. Just take chances. Um, and uh, eventually it just becomes muscle memory. It just becomes automatic. Uh, so from Eileen, uh, what size brushes are you using? Are they bristle? Yes, they are bristle. And uh, we've got size 4 extra long filbert. Not the handle is extra long, but the, the bristle itself is extra long. You can probably hear it. The really firm bristle, nice bristle. Um, and I like to use Silver Brush Grand Prix, not because I'm sponsored by them, but if any of you have any connections with Silver Brush and you can help me out, that would be much appreciated. But um, yeah, it's pretty expensive. Um, these are size four Silver Brush Grand Prix and size two. I like to use fours and twos with Silver Brush, but you will notice that different brushes, like a, a size two on like a Princeton brush, is going to be different than like a size two on a, a silver brush or a um, or a Robert Simmons brush they vary a little bit but Robert Simmons is a little closer to um, to uh, as you can see them here this is a two extra long Robert Simmons it's actually even longer uh, than the size two of the of the silver brush so twos and fours that's pretty much all I used for this entire painting some are more worn down as you see there than others that one's a little bit less worn down when you keep them in the freezer it does prevent the paint from drying a little bit but, but try to clean them as frequently as you can what happens when you don't clean them as frequently like me um, they start to get a little bit almost like a shovel which is if you have a light touch you can get around it but um, try to clean it as much as you can Hey Carla, have you painted many self-portraits? I don't know why it seems so scary and yet the easiest painting source what we have is ourselves. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't painted as many self-portraits as I wish I have. One of my students has painted like 50-something self-portraits, which is awesome. Um, you'll see that most likely later today because I do upload the virtual classroom also on Tuesdays. So Tuesdays is a jam-packed day for you here on YouTube from me. Uh, so... I wish I had done more self-portraits, but I will. And the older I get, the easier it is because, well, eventually I'm going to have, like, you know, like more structures to work with on my face um, than I do right now. Currently I'm 31, um, but I've got more planes on my face than I did when I was, say, like 22. Um, Angela, I wonder if you used a cold underpainting. I have used... That's called a verdaccio in some schools uh, i've done a greenish underpainting i've done that in the past Ooh, excuse me i need some caffeine even though i hate caffeine um so yes i have used greenish underpaintings in the past um but typically these days i like to go right in with color so from jim have you ever used rosemary brushes no i have never used them I should, I should, but I'm like a tortoise. A tortoise is kind of, not just slow, but a tortoise is uh, really about the routine. I, I'm the kind of person really like, if you work at a restaurant and I go there, you know what my order is. <laughs> I typically kind of just get the same thing all the time. Um, but I should. Uh, everybody keeps telling me about rosemary, but um, yeah, I haven't. I haven't used it yet. I had a student with rosemary brushes once, but those were synthetic brushes, so I can't really attest to their bristles. 
Hi, DM. Here, self-portrait is the hardest. It is the hardest if you think about it as a portrait of yourself. If you think about it as a series of shapes and a free model, a free model and a series of shapes, you're golden. You will learn so much, especially if you have a balance between doing master studies and self-portraits. Hey, happy artist. Oh, cool. Your son turned 31 yesterday. I turned 31 in March, so I'm a little bit older. So, uh, happy belated birthday to your son. Now, part of the beauty of this live stream, live streaming a pre-recorded video tutorial, is that I can answer your questions, like much much more efficiently than if this were pre-recorded because let's just face it for most youtube creators going to um, answer like a bunch of questions from videos that were uploaded maybe like years ago is not the easiest thing to do hey stephanie let's see he said don't do lots of self-portraits people who do a lot of self-portraits end up painting themselves into every portrait yet uh, let's see, uh, maybe it becomes muscle memory, but whatever is not good. So, uh, Stephanie, um, so the thing about that is if you do a lot of self-portraits or even one or two self-portraits, you know your likeness and you know your tendency. So, for example, um, I know that I have a tendency to make noses round, too round. Um, and that's because I look at a lot of Rembrandts, because Rembrandt self-portraits have a lot of roundness to the nose. But also my nose is round. I also have my mouth is like, ugh, like that. Uh, so it is important to know your likeness, because if you know your likeness, then you know how to not impose your likeness on another model. But I do suggest you do a lot of self-portraits because then you're doing a lot of painting from life. Unless you have access to live models on a regular basis, then then yeah, I would I would paint live models all day if I could. I, uh, but but a great comment there. Um, hey Carla, the fan brush was used to uh, bring down the thick paint. I didn't want to have too much thick paint there. So I just wanted to smoothen out the surface and um, to kill glare. So sometimes if you fan brush a specific direction, it reduces glare. Hey, Jim, you turned 70 in April, only started uh, painting three years ago, and now accepting commissions is never too late. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, I mean, yeah, I, I just turned 31 and I started painting uh, painting. I, I started playing pool um, pocket billiards like less than a year ago. So I know what it's like now to start from something like complete zero and try to like build, 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 build. Um, I don't really get that with painting because I've been doing painting for like 13, 14 years. So, um, but it is very humbling, I will say, to pick something up from, from ground zero and, and build up and then see where you end up after all that time and now you're doing commission portraits jim so that's an excellent excellent thing hey randy we missed you on the group zoom i hope you're doing well uh let's see hey i don't know how to pronounce your name last name lao how long does it take for you to make realistic paintings so like a a very fine finished painting let's just say a face a fine finished face probably take me about 20 hours i think um this one is only one hour and a half so um but but the funny thing is all of the things that make something look very realistic naturalistic are already there in the first like hour and it's all the simple shapes because the finish is nothing more than refinement of the fundamentals it's the fundamentals just refined um but it does take time. It is a more tedious thing. So, yeah, about 20 hours, I'd say. For, like, a head and shoulders, probably, like, 30 hours. Pushing on 40 hours, I'd say. But if I'm doing a commission and I need to get it done, 
at a certain time period. Uh, I can probably do like a whole thing in 20 hours, I think. Because remember, when you're a full-time artist, I was talking to my Zoom students about this. When you're a full-time artist, time is money. Time is money. So you don't want to take that long because it'll just cost you more. Time is money. So that's one thing. But if you're not a full-time artist, if you're not worried about how it looks like to attract certain attention, in my case, viewers on YouTube, uh, then just it, you can just relax and take all the time that you need. But the pressure does kind of help. And now I'm adding a little bit more of a... I guess that it's a neutralized red and you can see I'm relating the red here to the red up here this one is more closer towards the blue a little bit more pink this one's closer towards the orange so um, like I said when I'm mixing this I'm looking at this or at looking at that so I'm looking at the surrounding whoops the surrounding colors And yeah, a 20 hour live stream on YouTube would probably not be a good thing to do. Uh, someone out there might enjoy it, but I don't I don't think a 20 hour live stream would I would fall asleep like you probably would too like halfway through. Now we're starting to add some shapes for the lips and the lips enter into an awkward stage now we're really using the alizarin and the cadmium red, very predictable for the light on the shadow portion of the lips. And like I said, you, you know your likeness. You get to a point where you know your likeness. I know that my lips have a certain shape. I know that the outside of my face has a certain shape. So I know not to repeat it on um, other paintings. But just like Stephanie said earlier, be careful when you're painting other people not to impose your likeness onto them. Hey Rob, no worries, you're not late at all. This is, we've still got another, what? Let me look at the clock here. you still got another 37 minutes. So, um, yeah, these live streams, I'm going to do them my best, do them more frequently. Um, in the past, it was very hard for me because I was doing them and streaming at the same time, which is more time efficient for me because I don't have to edit anything. But this, in in a sense, is more relaxing because I'm able to actually talk to you and um, look at what I'm painting after the fact, after I have painted it. So, um, So typically, Rob and everyone else, you're more likely to catch me around this time on Tuesdays. I can't really promise if it'll be between like 2.30 or 3, but, but around that time, all the way up to like maybe 4, um, you're likely to catch me. And plus this will be here as a pre-recorded video, so uh, you'll get to watch this infinitely after this. Hello. No problems, no problems. I'm glad that you uh, enjoy my paintings. Thank you. And sometimes, like I'll, like for example, the last self portrait I did, I think, I think my hair was tied up. Um, this time, I just let my crazy hair be how it is. So I don't know. I decided to paint it the way it was. Uh, good question. Yes, I am wiping my brush in between. Um, I've got some paper towels. <laughs> Oh um, man, they, they've kind of got dried paint on them that is sitting right underneath of the the filming setup. Um, but, but yeah, I am wiping the brushes off from time to time. But I have a light brush, a dark brush, a red brush, and a green brush. Uh, uh, meaning a warm brush and a cool brush. Uh, so that's how I organize the brushes a little bit. But yeah, sometimes I'll wipe them off just so there's not too much paint. For those of you that are not aware why oil painters use bristle brushes, excuse me, uh, bristle brushes carry a lot of paint, and if they're a good quality bristle brush, 
They carry a lot of paint, yet they have a nice and soft touch. Even when paint starts to dry on them, like mine. A, uh, a cheaper bristle brush in the beginning will carry a lot of paint, but it will lose its bristles over time. And when the paint starts to harden on it, it just it's like a chisel. Um, it's just like a like a shovel more. It just pushes the paint around. Now you see how, like I said, like a sculpture starting just to round out shapes and start to add more specificity as I go. All right, so I got a question for everyone. Let's see how many of us are here. We've got about... About 30 of us here, so I want to see 30 responses. And you know my first question. Where in the world are you? Where in the world are you? I am. You want to know where I am? I'm in Beltsville. I'm in Beltsville, Maryland. Soon I will be living in Northern Virginia. I will be moving December 5th. Let's see. So from Rob CP, question, do you paint complement colors next to each other? I seen a video and the artist said it makes the painting more alive, but I may have remembered wrong. Uh, paint complement colors next to each other. I use complementary colors a lot, like red and green, purple and yellow, blue and orange. I use it a lot to create neutrals. Um, I wouldn't say I put them next to each other. I put them on top of each other, kind of, to create a neutral. But I will have, like, say, the red. In this case, I think it's to the left. I'm not sure. And then the green to the right. Um, but, but yes, I, I do use complementary colors a lot. Um, and I try to keep them somewhat organized on the palette. So that would be a good idea, to have them side by side. So Jim is from Holland. Uh, Walid here is from Egypt. DMs from Iceland, Vegan Moon from North Carolina. I gotta say, there is a, a vegan restaurant that has the best sandwiches. Like, um, like it's like a I don't know what it is. It's like a tofu, like an imitation or something. And their fries, man, oh my gosh, one of the best restaurants ever um, in Northern Virginia. I think it's called Lovin' Hut. Um, if you're in Northern Virginia, it's really good. So uh, let's see. We've got uh, Anna here in Germany, Rob CP, uh, East England, Newcastle, uh, Eileen, Scotland, Jim, although you are Scottish, you are in a different place, Emmanuel, uh, let's see, California, Leone, Australia, Hippie Artist from Texas, Volker from uh, Germany, let's see, Rob CP, it may have been hot and cool colors next to each other, sorry I should have written it down, oh, well no worries about that, like hot and cool, okay so warm and cool colors, yeah, I typically do have them somewhat next to each other. Let's look at the palette. Let's investigate. Um, because you know what? The palette itself is a... Um, this is a record of your thought process when you're painting. Because this tends to impact what you see on your canvas. So, yeah. There's a cool there and a warm there. A cool there in a warm there so yes actually and I, I didn't think about that but but yeah I do have them side by side usually I just think about like the organization of it but yeah um, they are next to each other and even here there's a cool string that goes right into a, a warm you see that right there cool string that goes into a warm so you are correct and I do have my complementary like right across from each other so red is right across from green Orange is right across from blue. Yellow is right across from violet. And this is really all I need for most paintings, most lighting conditions, is 
my white, which is titanium white and lead white, cadmium yellow, Indian yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red, alizarin, permanent, viridian, which in this case is actually ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow, um, ultramarine blue, phthalo turquoise, dioxazine purple. It has taken me years to get to a point where I can take a 22 color palette which is what I was taught to use at Studio Incominati, and condense it into something that can get me almost anything. The Indian yellow gives you a really nice and deep yellow, and it's transparent. The alizarin is just very much necessary for everything. I use alizarin permanent, which is more of a quinacridone color, because it gives me nice and deep reds and pinks. you got to have your primaries in there, of course. Um, but I found that phthalo turquoise is the ultimate blue it's the most saturated blue with cadmium red i can get the most saturated red if i throw in a touch of alizarin um, and uh, i can get the brightest yellow already there with indian yellow with cadmium yellow and just a really nice and functional palette if you get yourself a rectangle like this where the complementary colors are adjacent to one another it's a highly functional palette uh, very functional Hideous somewhat because I don't clean it, but functional. John McGeekin from Scotland. No problem, Rob CP. Emmanuel. Oh, thank you so much for that comment. Oh, I'm so glad. I I do not feel worthy of such a, a wonderful compliment. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Angela from Brazil. So, um... Now that we're now that you've got some something an image on the canvas that is not frightening anymore it was frightening in the earlier stages you see the refinement start to happen without my pinky touching the canvas so most of the time I used size 4 bristle brushes which is large compared to an 8 by 10 canvas uh, so Jim, it is an 8 by 10 It is the same size as this canvas here. So same size here. The face is just a little under life size, uh, but it is 8 by 10 inches. I really do suggest you everyone buy these. Um, these are um, Centurion Universal Primed 8 by 10 Each of these cost me, what, like $3 if I buy them in a pack? Oh, thank you, thank you so much uh, for the uh, super chat DM. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the super chat. That helps me out so so much, especially since I'm moving out to uh, uh, to rent a place with my wife soon. Um, very very awesome. It's going to be our first time um, having our own place together because pretty much been crashing at my parents' place for years now so um thank you thank you thank you so much dm uh that is one big big step towards upari's future so uh thank you thank you so much for the uh the, the super chat so to anyone wondering what that is um the orange there it is a um uh, it's a built-in tip function on youtube so you're able to uh support your favorite youtube creators it doesn't have to be me but if you're watching a live stream of someone and you really appreciate what they do uh, all of us love getting uh super chats whenever whenever we do so thank you so much uh dm oh thank you waleed thank you thank you So you see now on the side of the eyebrow something very important here about not just the color but the edges. So eyebrows, if you make the edges too sharp, they will tend to look like they were painted on with a sharpie. So you have to be very careful with your edge work around the eyebrows. Now here's another thing. Color-wise, with the eyebrows, experiment a little bit with the dark light this value here transitioning into the um, the shadow tone of the eye socket play around with that color a little bit hey rob cp uh, oh no problems don't worry about the uh, 
Yeah, don't worry about uh, not being able to to do the super chat. That's that's okay. I understand. It's tough times everywhere. I mean, the economy is tough everywhere. So I don't know what just happened, but my live stream refreshed itself. What just happened there? That's kind of scary. I hope I didn't lose my live stream. That's really weird. So, if anyone's watching this live, um, currently my screen just refreshed itself. I don't know what just happened. Oh, okay, good, it's back. Whew! Oh, that scared me. All of that time just for YouTube to cut out. Um, so yeah, don't don't worry. If uh, your presence here to me is already you're already supporting me in a in a monetary sense just by being here and writing comments even if you want to say hi um even if you want to say hi that you know that that to me is is money really because it helps other people see the stream so don't worry about it hey jim uh let's see I, let's see i missed that comment there we can also buy you a coffee do you have that oh i don't have to buy a coffee but i can look into it i've heard of it for sure yeah yeah i can uh look at that um the coffee thing it would have to be decaf though because, because i don't uh i don't do well with caffeine oh, oh thanks angela angela eileen and, and vegan moon you know what i want to go to that vegan restaurant now that you mentioned it i i want to go to the vegan restaurant now i haven't been there in years um but yeah i want to go Hey Anna, I dive into exploring skin tones but don't need them to be hyper realistic. I love trying to add a tiny bit of an impressionistic touch. Well there you go, like I said, taking a chance. You see how with the facial hair, it started out greenish, now it's going more towards like an orangey. Kind of like a, some of these colors are hard to tell. Uh, I'm looking at the original, more like an orangey to make the green a little bit more neutral. Funny thing here with skin tones. Skin tones are actually pretty forgiving. Um, drawing is not forgiving with portraiture. You know, if if my eye was going this way and the other eye was going that way, yeah, a portrait's not forgiving in that sense. But um, color, it's actually pretty forgiving. You can push certain areas of the face, different variations of the skin tone, and it still reads well from a distance. Eventually these do get pushed cooler either that or when I took the photograph It turned out a little bit cooler because again, this is what we're eventually going to get and You see it's not that different anymore, and there's only 22 minutes left So it's not that different um, But you can see me here. There's three of us. This one is elongated because for some reason my uh, camera Kind of elongates when I have the it's set up on the webcam setting, but you see now I'm starting to add a little bit of that red. And if you look at the side by side, don't even think about the palette right now. Don't don't worry about the palette. If you look at the side by side, you see that that red on the cheek. I pushed it more red intentionally, and then I went in and made it more subtle. So that's one thing about working with color that um, that you're not gonna understand until you take a chance because if you push a color further out like the cheek area there and you know that you're going to come back and refine it it will actually give you more control than the reverse if you're going from a subtle monochromatic underpainting little by little by little building up the color it is not necessarily going to make you better with color these exercises will make you better with color even though drawing is going to be very difficult it will make you better with color so now um another question i would like to ask everyone and um please leave a comment even if it's just a short one because it helps with the stream it helps with the youtube analytics which eventually helps you probably make a living so uh question for everyone before i ask that question we just got a question so from rob cp uh would you say that drawing and values are the most important part of getting a likeness because i still have uh i still have seen uh, let's see people draw green lines and they still look real yes you're correct you are so correct 
or right on the money there. Uh, drawing and value are the most important thing for a likeness. The big thing is drawing. It's drawing, then value, then color. And remember that one of my teachers, John DeMartin, would say that a likeness is nothing more than the confirmation of an accurate drawing. That's all it is. There's no secret to likeness. There's no do this, do that, and then magically it's going to look like the person. It's all about the drawing, all about the accuracy. However, do not get hung up on likeness. One of my teachers, Paulden, would say, don't sacrifice the painting for the likeness. Because you're not, this is now me, I'm telling you, you are a poet. You are, this is, this is um, fiction. This is not nonfiction. Nonfiction would be a textbook. You are writing a novel and not a textbook. Do your best, but don't get hung up on the likeness. Um, so from Vegan Moon. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Oh, and, and thank you for uh, turning on the notifications. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Carla. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoy watching this. Uh, thank you for, for liking and subscribing. Thank you. Thank you. So again, if anyone's watching this and you're not subscribed, I'm guilty about that. I watch a lot of a lot of YouTube videos and I'm not subscribed, but I'm I'm going to subscribe to them. Um, subscribing to your um, doesn't have to even be your favorite YouTuber. I don't have to be your favorite YouTuber, but um, it it really does help help us a lot. Um, let's see. So Hippie Artist, you had a question about Patreon. You're on the ten dollar tier. Does that allow me in the Zoom classes? So the Zoom uh, painting, uh, the Zoom classes are the forty dollar a month. However, on the first Thursday of the month at twelve o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, pretty much the first Thursday of the month, twelve o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, from the five dollars up because that's what the live chat tier is is able to join a uh, monthly uh, Zoom. But um, the weekly Zoom lessons, that's the Zoom tutoring tier. That one is $40 a month. And um, and I understand the economy is tough and all that. But, but if you can make it on a Thursday, uh, you don't have to pay anything extra. We can hang out on Zoom then. So from Jim, John Singer Sargent said that every portrait is a painting where there is... A, a little bit something wrong with the mouth. I agree. A mouth, the mouth is usually the thing that's moved the most anyway in, in any painting. So um, from Rob CP, you heard that too. Oh yeah, he definitely was one of the greatest. Um, so yeah, Sargent also said every time I paint a portrait, I lose a friend. Think about how many portraits I've painted in my lifetime. Yupari does not have that many friends. He doesn't. He sits alone in his studio all day. But I do go to the pool hall. I have met a lot of people at the pool hall. I, I know probably close to like maybe 15 people now that I've met at the pool hall. Um, pretty cool to go out and meet people. Um, so I was going to ask everyone a question, and let's go ahead and ask that question now. This will be very educational for everyone watching this live. This is a everyone watching this as a pre-recorded video too. Who is your favorite? painter and why and because i'm not painting i can actually type it out to you so currently who is your favorite painter and why i'm typing out my answer My answer is Nelson Jenks. He combined classical realism and impressionist color. Let me tell you something. Uh, impressionist color is impressionism was in addition to academic art. It was not something else like the media tries to. And, and art history, unfortunately, art history is wrong in that sense. The Im impressionism was not breaking away from academic art, even if they said that they were. 
They didn't. They added something new to academic art. And you're, you're seeing me try to implement it here because every plane change is a color change. I take after Nelson Shanks. Nelson Shanks took after the um, academic artists of the past and uh, taking after impressionist color like Monet and William Air Chase and all of that. Um, so Rob CP, it's a sign of intelligence not to have many friends. <laughs> That's funny. A sign of intelligence not to have many friends. I'm, I'm not very good at that. I mean, like, I'll have a friend message me on Facebook and I'll respond like a month later. I, I am not very good with that. But I eventually get back to everyone. I try to, at least. So from Rob CP, Vermeer, because the quality of his painting seems magical. I can attest to that. Having seen some Vermeers in person in D.C., I can attest to that for sure. Excellent response there. Carla, uh, written, oh my gosh, there are so many old and new. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. It's very hard to pick one, uh, but I, I chose the one. <laughs> Nelson Shanks. He's also not that known, so I want him to be very well known. His son, Alexander Shanks, is still uh, still painting today. He's younger than me. I think he's probably like 25 or so. Um, so look out for Alexander Shanks. Nelson Shanks' son still painting today. And I'm sure he will be painting for the rest of his life. Excellent painter. Uh, oh yeah, I would definitely look up Nelson Shanks. Someone mentioned to me to look up this name. Where is it? Uh-oh. I shouldn't have clicked that button. Why did I do that? Uh, Rob Heffern. I, I finally looked him up. Uh, excellent quality work in his finishes. Let's see. Vegan Moon. Most artists have few friends. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We spend so much time in isolation. So from Jim Rembrandt, as I live in Holland and can visit museums in Amsterdam and spend hours studying them at a distance less than a meter. I wish somebody send me out to Amsterdam. I want to see the uh, Rembrandt paintings in person. I'd probably cry like to see some of them up close and personal. He's such, such an amazing painter. I think he's contributed so much to me and hopefully to you because I've been studying him so much. Let's see. Lucian Freud. Now that I'm trying to go back to realism. Picasso. And I don't know how to pr pronounce that one. For emotion. Awesome. So from Anna. Currently Michelangelo. I like the old Italian masters. Figurative and narrative paintings. And his colors are stunning. Awesome. Awesome. DM. John Singer Sargent. Uh, it's like magic. His brush. Definitely. So from Carla, for me, an old master, Rembrandt, he experimented. You can go back over and over and find something new to view in his paintings. Definitely. I, I can definitely attest to that. Hey, Stephanie. Let's see. Thanks for the great videos and advice. I subscribed since 2019 when you had your first wonky camera. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I think that's around the time I started live streaming. I was... I think that was 2020 but I, I think i've actually i've been on youtube since 2017 little known fact i've been here for a while i haven't i haven't been the most popular but i i try to do these long-term format uh, videos as much as i can let's see oh thank you i'm glad that you enjoyed watching me evolve Oh, thank you um, for your comment from the Isle of Wight. Vegan Moon, let's see, Van Gogh, because he worked his simple, complex, uh, let's see, worked, his work is simple, but complex, and life was sad. Yeah, his life was pretty sad. He, he, he and Caravaggio, I think, are two examples of, um, you know, kind of like the demented soul or the tormented soul. But you know, um, oftentimes when I'm going through something rough, when someone that I love dies or something, or my some heartbreaking thing happens to me, or something like difficult happens, 
I tend to get more inspiration with painting. It's a little bit weird. I don't want bad things to happen to me. I just want to live a nice and, and chill life. But but sometimes in our lives when things don't go the way we want, we actually end up painting better somehow. I don't know why that is. But, but now I'm using palette knife on the back and pushing the effect of light to the back there. So from Volker, favorite painter in these days right now is Leo puts i don't know how to pronounce that one an Aust austrian impressionist from the early 20th century like his loose brush awesome you like his loose brush awesome so from jim your favorite is rembrandt is the uh, favorite rembrandt is the jewish bride uh when uh, the rhine museum opened in the late 1800s van gogh spent 10 days in front of it wow I didn't know that. The Leone, I recently saw the wonderful uh, Titans in the National Gallery in London. I wish. I wish. But you can actually see that light behind my hair in, in the camera. You just don't see the color. But it, it was, uh, it is a little bit warmer. And you see the camera actually washes it out a little bit. So hard to believe, but we've only got eight minutes. So this this one went by pretty quickly. Like I said, these sketches are very very useful, even though, for example, they may not be the most entertaining thing to most viewers on YouTube. The thing about this is that you see every single brush stroke. You see the entire thing evolve from beginning to end, and um, and I get to answer your questions. As I do it, so uh, very very fun win win. Hey, Rob CP, you love Velasquez. Can't spell his name. Don't worry about it. I understand what you're talking about. And now I'm starting to use skin tone. So here's a tip for everyone with color. Yes, every plane change is a color change. However, uh, sometimes with dark hair, light looks cool on dark hair. Light looks cool, but if you add a cool to the dark underlayer of the hair, it will look gray relative to the surrounding colors. So what I usually do is go warmer than I think in hue when I'm painting the light for the hair. So that way it will look like highlights on dark hair instead of gray hairs. I will eventually have gray hairs, but I don't have them yet. Uh, so that's why I, I pretty much just use skin tone. Uh, for the light of the hair. Oh, thanks, Rob CP. So from Jim, one of my favorite. Let's see, one of oh, I, I misread that. One of my wife's relatives, Anna Bernit, taught Van Gogh to paint. What really? He was taken out of uh, school when he was seven and taught from home. Wow. So one of your wife's relatives taught Van Gogh. Well, look at that. That is awesome. Awesome lineage there. That's really cool. Awesome. So from Jim, let's see. You sat in front of, oh, sat in front of the painting for hours. I've done that too. I, I've looked at, um, in particular, Vermeer's, uh, the woman holding a balance. I've looked at that one for hours and hours. That might be the one single painting I've spent the most time staring at, along with the Nelson Shanks in the National Portrait Gallery of the uh, the opera singer with the red dress. So from Vegan Moon, my problem is starting a painting, but when uh, let's see, when starts get difficult, I abort uh, finishing the painting for months. I mean, it's okay to return to it too uh, after months has gone by. I've got I've got a painting that I still have yet to post on Instagram. I've been posting it in pieces. It's one with a blue dress. I should post it. I finished it already, but it, I've returned to it months and months at a time. But uh, it took me a year and a month, I think, to finish it. Hey Jim, you said she wish you wish she could. All right, so reconnection successful. So I lost internet a little bit there. Sorry about that. 
So Rob CP, you've never seen a Vermeer in real life. I would definitely make a plan to see a Vermeer in person. I uh, I have never seen. I have. Hmm. I'm lucky. I live near DC. There's very few. I've never seen a Solomon Joseph Solomon in person. Hey, vegan moon. Yeah, my Instagram is linked in the description box, along with the links to the online classes as well. Um, I have I I let my artist website expire. Uh, it was getting a little pricey, so I'm kind of sticking with Instagram. But I do want to make another one because I want to sell all these um, eight by ten paintings. So I'm going to be making a website specifically to show my artwork and to sell the eight by tens in the future. The DM. I am starting an empty canvas since. Uh, early morning, uh, so that would be, hmm, what is 21 o'clock? Uh, well, since 24 hours would give me 12 o'clock, then that's, I'm confused. I can't do math right now. That's three hours before t 12, so 9 a.m.? I can't do math. I can't do math, everyone. I got a math degree, but I can't do arithmetic, let me tell you. Math degree, but I can't do arithmetic. Also, painters that have been painting for years cannot draw straight lines. Funny fact. Just because you are an experienced painter doesn't mean you can draw a straight line. Just because you have a math degree doesn't mean you can do arithmetic. So, um, there you go. Oh, cool, I was right. It was nine. <laughs> I got that one right. 9 p.m. Wow. So hopefully this has helped you out with color. Um, we are now at the final two minutes of the uh, painting demo. And I think I might have picked up the canvas and moved it. I don't know. Eventually I'm going to pick up the canvas and move it. But um, we are now at the final two minutes. Hopefully my explanations on the colors helped you out my thought process about how I work with color. Hopefully that helps you out. And if you struggle with color, um, if you struggle, if you continue to struggle and you would like to have more, there I'm moving the camera now. So if you would like to continue to improve your, your artwork with me, please check out the online classes. Remember they start out at $10 a month. And remember you will be able to have your images in the weekly virtual classroom video which will be uploaded later tonight. So there is that painting up close uh, with the final one minute. Again, I don't know what's going to happen after one minute ends with the, uh, the stream. I won't leave in one minute, but I'll hang out and answer some questions. Hey, Carla. Oh, thank you. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad I inspired you to, to do a self-portrait. Push through no matter how difficult or how bad it turns out. Always remember, everyone. Always remember. When you're doing a live stream... <laughs> When you're doing a self-portrait, you're not doing it live, so you don't have to worry about other people seeing it. Even I didn't have to worry about it because I wasn't doing this one live. Uh, I did this one, and then now I'm narrating it to you. But um, definitely, if you ever have the time to do it, a self-portrait is definitely going to help you with color so much. Let's see. So from Hippie Artist, Vermeer in RL is awesome. I saw his paintings as a group from Russia. Vermeer, Rembrandt, oh, with Jackson Pollock. That's that's an interesting combination there. Lots of classical painters. Oh, awesome. I'm glad you had that experience. Hey, Eileen. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoy the portrait. Thank you, thank you. All right, we've got seven seconds left on the timer. Let me see what's going to happen. It might restart. I think it's going to restart. Hey, Anna. Oh, it's your first time here. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. So I do these, um, 
I try to do them once a week, typically on Tuesdays. Um, but but I try to have at least one of these a week. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. And remember, this will be available as a pre-recorded video, so you can watch it completely for free on YouTube. So from Jim, let's see. Uh, you've seen Vermeer paintings in person as well. Been a big advantage living in Holland. Let's see, small country you can get anywhere in a few hours. People joke that Holland is a large museum. I gotta go there eventually. Hey, vegan moon. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed the commentary. That that worries me sometimes. I don't, I, you know, I don't want to come out too like too dry or too boring. But I also just I want to be myself. Like I don't like when, some, when I'm painting and I'm talking at the same time. Sometimes it's a little bit of like uh like a stunt, like a spectacle. <laughs> But this is more calm and, and relaxing for me. So Rob CP, uh, looking back on this portrait, uh, let's see, did find any bits challenging? Good question. Um, what did I find challenging about this one? And again, the, the picture actually looks different. The picture looks cooler. The picture is a little bit closer to what it actually looks like. Um, what did I find challenging about this? Let's put this. Oh, well, never mind. They look about the same. It's just the photograph is a little bit cooler, but they are about the same. What I found the most challenging about this was the drawing, to be honest. Um, trying to get the like the ballpark of my likeness, trying to get it as close as I could. That was the most challenging thing. Um, Somehow I managed not to have to move the mouth that much, the nose or the eyes. The eye to our right, I, I had to move up a little bit. I felt it as soon as I was putting it in there, it needed to be moved. Um, but I would I'd say 100%. Uh, the drawing was the most difficult thing because I had to draw with big masses of color. But as I always say, when you are working with values, it's easier to see mistakes than with lines. If you're working with colors, it's even easier than just using values to see lines because things are more structural. Because it's easier to see mistakes, it does make the awkward stage even more intense. So um, that's something to keep in mind as well, which was a difficult thing about this too, was the fact that um, the awkward stage was real. It was a, a real difficulty. So this is the point where I'm going to ask if there are any last-minute questions. There are still about 20 of us here, so I don't want to just leave right, like, right then and there. So I'm going to see if there are any last-minute questions. And then after this, I'm going to film the virtual classroom, the feedback student of um, the feedback video from my students. I'll make sure to get more sleep next time. Hey Rob CP. Oh, I'm glad I make it seem seem so uh, so easy. And trust me, just let it flow. Just work naturally. Um, yes, you do have to take more time and care with the drawing, but um, Nelson Shanks would say, "Fine form with freedom." And I I've for the past like 13, 14 years, I've been trying to do that. Fine form with freedom. Hey, Leonie. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, what would you like me to talk about next time? I forgot to ask everyone that. So while we still have 26 of us here, uh, last time someone suggested to do color, to talk about color. So um, I will do another painting like this. It might be a self-portrait. It might be in a different pose. I don't know yet, but... What would you like me to talk about? This time was specifically about color. So um, if there's something you want me to focus on, I'll just, I can choose something random. What would you like me to do? And um, as long as it's something related to a painting like this.
And even if I don't make it the, the main topic of the next one, I will still talk about it. Could you talk about how to get the correct values? You got it. All right, values. That that will be it. Uh, let's let's tell Siri to remind me. So, oh man, my phone is off. Values, you got it. All right, all right, come on, phone. Five days from now, remind me to make a video about values. Okay, add it. All right, cool. So Siri is going to remind me. So vegan moon, color mixing. Um, so the specific mixtures. Um, well, since I'm going to be working in color anyway, vegan moon. So next Tuesday, hopefully, next Tuesday around this time, I'll be back. Let's just say somewhere around the 2.30 p.m. to like 4 ballpark um, Eastern Daylight Time. Um, I will answer your questions about the color mixing. But I will make the title and the main theme specifically about um, values. So sounds good, everyone. Oh, thank you, Rob CP. Of course, Stephanie. Yeah, we can do one on perspective in the future. So again, during these streams, just suggest it, suggest it. The one that gets suggested the most will be what I'll talk about next. Because there is perspective involved in all of it. Um, so, well, yeah, I can talk about anything. I am an open book. Ask me anything. All right, so thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching this live. Uh, especially thank you so much for the uh, super chat earlier. Thank you, thank you so much for the super chat. So uh, once again, remember, if you want to take your online art education with me further, for just $10 a month, please consider joining the online class basic tier. A link to that is in the description box of this video. If you want to hang out with me on Zoom every week, twice a week, then check out the Zoom tutoring tiers. Once again, I wish you all the very best. Don't forget, I'm going to upload a video giving my students advice called the virtual classroom video. And if you want to be in that video, again, that starts out, that is the $10 a month, gets you access to that. So once again, thank you all so much. I wish you the very best in all of your artwork. And I really hope that you have an awesome Thanksgiving. So for those of you that celebrate Thanksgiving, that's coming up soon. So I hope you have a wonderful thanksgiving as well so take care and i will see you on the next one